This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. This week, the Mad Canadian will be at the corner of North and Patterson this Monday from 10 to 2, and this Thursday, also in Cary, at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria between 4 and 7. Light week this week, so be sure to get your Mad Canadian fix this Monday and Thursday. Be sure to check out his social media for more information about him and his food truck. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast order, veteran owned, hand roasted, fresh roast order coffee company based out of Toledo, Ohio. Perrysburg more specifically, but it's 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 basically near or it's it's Toledo, okay? It's Toledo. But it's Perrysburg. Um is a, uh, I don't know if I said this already or not, but it's a marine owned. I said it was a veteran owned company, more specifically a marine owned company. Uh, integrity is the core value of what they do because they do everything right, not just from them to you, the consumer, but also from them all the way back to the farmers of the beans. That's why all of their beans are certified organic and fair trade. Um, some of their coffees are available in K Cup. There is free shipping over $50. If you find that one or two coffees that you love the most, you can do a subscribe and save service to ensure that you never run out and save a couple bucks along the way. Um, did I say gift cards are available? If not, gift cards are available. Uh, so like I said, we'll, we'll talk about, he has a brand new line of flavored coffees out and we'll talk about that during the next ad read. So make sure to stick around for that. Uh, Mad, I almost said Mad Canadian, Iron Bean Coffee. That is ironbeancoffee.com. going everybody everyone had a good weekend kyle i'm just gonna say it i'm gonna say mm -hmm. it because i know everyone's thinking it that was that was literally the worst iron bean read i've done in weeks i don't worry jared it was we'll do better next time i it has to go up from here i hope that's not indicative of the quality of the rest of this episode of the sloop cast uh because that was stop it Stuart. You, you're you're a troll and we know it all right let's get in let's let's go ahead and get into the episode jared we've got barbecue back here you're all invited welcome to the slipcast how are you doing today kyle i'm uh, doing pretty well jared after going a perfect what? seven for seven in the sloop pass picks how are you doing? You know, you really should be saving that for the Tuesday episode. I'll say in the Tuesday as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, since we're bragging, since we're bragging, I really like got this close to nailing down the prediction of the Ohio State game perfectly. I said uh, 55 to 14. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's. 52 to 13. I'm, t I'm giving myself a, an A minus on that one. Um, and not only that, but I also called when Rutgers two touchdowns would happen. I specifically said they'd get a drive in the first quarter, just enough to make everyone a little bit upset. Now, it wasn't a drive. It was a long it was a long play. OK. All right. So, again, A minus. Uh, and then I also said they'd get a junk touchdown in the fourth quarter, which they did. Mm hmm. My prediction of the Ohio State game, Kyle, was damn near flawless. Yeah, yeah, good job, good job. All right, let's go. Let's go ahead and get into it here. Uh, well, before we get into the Ohio State Rutgers game, uh, some people were were asking about Noah Potter. Hey, what, what's going on with Noah here? Uh, right before the game started, uh, actually during the game, actually, um, Noah Potter actually posted um, a picture of him saying that he he had uh, eye surgery. Uh, he, he was losing some uh, peripheral vision and got surgery. So um, anticipate him being out for, for a while now. Uh, so hopefully for best wishes to him and a speedy recovery. Yeah. Um, Ohio State has been incredibly secretive revolving availability and injuries and so on and so forth this year. 
Um, now this one, we, we now know what's going on with Noah Potter. Um, now this is like a medical issue. So I don't blame Ohio state for keeping this one in particular under wraps. This does not fall under football injury stuff. So, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be like HIPAA, HIPAA, HIPAA. Cause I, I'm not a lawyer. Um, but I, I just don't know if Ohio state's even allowed to talk about what's happening. Now he is, he's allowed to put whatever he wants on his own Twitter page. Um, but yeah, speedy recovery for him. Um, anyone who's have any sort of eye problems before know that he's, he's done for the year. Absolutely. Cause like he can't even get like his blood pressure up because of what that can do to a recovering eyeball. Um, so I'm, you know, he's, he's out for the year for sure. Yep. Here, here's to a speedy recovery and hope make him a, um, better and ready for, for next year. All right. So enough with the, um, the bad news. Let's talk about the good news. And that was this game here where Ohio state took care of business down in New Jersey, 52 to 13. Definitely covered, definitely covered that, uh, that 14 and a half point spread. Yeah. Over in New Jersey. What did he say? Oh, really? You're you're going to get over versus down. Shut up. Get over it. <laughs> All right. Uh, but you, so you there's want, no reason. Wanna... There is no reason why North is at the top of the map. There's no reason for it other than like it's just what we decided a long time ago. So so get your get your prepositional phrases out of here. Um, Kyle. So, so where do you want, where do you want? Yeah. Where do you want to start with this? Cause there's a lot of great, great things from this game. And yeah. Where do you want to start with this? Well, I mean like the first half I think is a good place to start. Um, this is a game that Ohio state could have put up a hundred if they wanted to. So like the first half is really the only thing we really need to focus on here. Um, Ohio state played poorly in the second half, but it doesn't matter. It was the backup offensive yeah, so line, like outside of like one or two drives, it was the backup offensive line. It was the backup defenders. It was the backup quarterbacks. And yeah, it, we, so I don't, I don't really even feel the need to focus too much on what happened in the second half. So Kyle with a half of football and maybe plus a drive or two, um, I think first thing we have to look at again is just this group of freshmen and especially if we extend that to the red shirt freshmen it's insane what these guys are doing absolutely insane yeah henderson has another great day gets i don't even want to say injured i'll say hurt he he, he did up. something then he was pacing around on the sidelines and pads the rest of the game he's he's fine if the game had been competitive they'd have put him back in i'm not worried about it um Burke has another great game. Martinez is coming into his home own. Uh, Ronnie Hickman, who he's a second year player, is he not? I don't, I don't know if he's like a sophomore or a redshirt freshman or whatever. It doesn't with last year, not counting towards eligibility. I really don't know how much of that actually even a redshirt sophomore. Really? He's a third year player. Oh, OK. Uh, OK, I might be mistaken on that then. Um, but still Cody Simon, uh, Ohio State's the youth movement at Ohio State is incredible right now. Um, on the defensive side, it feels especially JTT gets another start. Uh, Sawyer had a lot of snaps. Where, I mean, the youth, the, the future is so bright at Ohio State. And I don't even want to say that as a way to dismiss this year. Because with all of the chaos and, you know, tune into our Tuesday episode. All of the chaos that's happening around the country right now, Ohio State isn't just like still in it. They're practically in the driver's seat right now. I mean, they, they really are in the driver's seat because, you know, if we if we look at the if we look at the latest a people, which like. For the record, the AP poll does not matter at all, at all. It doesn't matter. But if we're using it as some sort of indicator, um, Ohio State's currently at seventh and they play number four. 
And they, in theory, I assume if they beat Penn State and if Iowa keeps winning, worst case scenario is they end up playing Iowa as well. So there's two more teams knocked off. You're now in the top five. Alabama will take out Georgia. Cincinnati is an FBS team. We really or not. Excuse me. Cincinnati is an FBS team, but Cincinnati is not a power five team. They're a group of five team. Should that be held against them after beating Notre Dame, after beating Indiana? Probably not. Will it? We'll find out. Oklahoma. Oklahoma is on a tightrope. Uh, they're barely beating terrible teams. I. If that continues, if Oklahoma shows no improvement, Ohio State could, with one loss, get in over Oklahoma at this point. I wouldn't be shocked to see it. Yeah, and I want to save that for uh, Tuesday's episode here. Apologies. Uh, yeah, no, you're good. So this game, um, yes, he, his um, Hickman is a redshirt sophomore. Definitely, yeah, definitely playing the part. Like, he's playing very well right now, uh, but – you were talking about how well Ohio State looked in the in the first half. Uh, once the first strings went, once the first string went out, it was just kind of just dead after that. So I took the time to look at first half plus the first drive of the second half because that's that's what really mattered was how the how the first team did. No punts every drive minus the last possession that ended the half all resulted in a score. We have. Touchdown, field goal, touchdown, 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 and a half touchdown. Great, great. You, you can't for, ask for much better than that other than the field goal turning into a, a touchdown. So, so looking at that, so of all of those drives combined, 470 total yards. Stroud went 17 for 23, 330 yards, five touchdowns. This is This is the type of game that, a lot of people were expecting CJ to have right from the beginning. Now we were on here after week one, after week two, after week three, just saying, Hey, he's a, he's a freshman going to make freshman mistakes. We've seen that number of times at Ohio state, whether it was Terrell Pryor, uh, Braxton Miller, uh, JT Barrett all had mistakes when they were young and came in, let them have time to settle down. And here we go. Now a lot now a lot of people are saying, well, him sitting out kind of proved that he was injured and all he needed was uh just a week off. Yeah, possibly. He also but could have just needed the mental break of it. Could be that too. Yeah. We're not gonna know for sure, but you can you can assume whatever you want. Fair the enough. Bottom line is sure. bottom line is this is the CJ Stroud that Ryan Day saw and wanted. And why he picked him to be QB one for this team. His his pass to JSN on the sideline, which was just literally could not have been delivered any more. Like we we say, oh, that couldn't have been thrown any better. Like too often, that literally couldn't have been thrown any better. That pass that was... alone, that pass alone, plus through the first half, he had as many touchdowns as he did in completions. Those two things alone, well. No interceptions. Those three things alone earns him an A plus as our first grade. Um, I just feel like, Kyle, we're just going to grade the first half for our grades. Yeah. We don't need to grade the backups. Yeah, yeah I, I, I agree with you there. Yeah, A plus with, with CJ there. Can't ask for anything much better that made great decisions. Ran the ball yeah. when he needed to. Uh, didn't take unnecessary hits. He he dove. He slid. Well, I don't know if he actually slid, but he he dove when he needed to. Yeah, he, he did exactly what he needed to. A plus there. Running backs. Running backs is a little interesting just because of Henderson only getting eight carries for seventy one yards. Definitely hurt his average <laughs> for the year. He uh, he did. He averaged eight point nine yards a carry this game, and that hurt his average. <laughs> yeah. Uh Teague Teague did okay. Uh during the first string, he had 41 41 yards on 10 carries, so over four yards a carry. Not not great. Uh, I, I feel terrible for Master Teague 
because his legacy will be he was a pretty good running back surrounded by elite talent. Yeah, because he's a pretty good running back. There are rosters at Ohio State in recent history in which he would have been the unquestioned number one running back that he's just not on this roster. Yeah, I would I would give this I'm I would give the running backs probably a B plus A minus. I'm cool. I with thought that. They, they I think they I think they did enough to to keep the drive going, especially especially that uh, first series in the second half. Teague did exactly what he needed to do to get the first down to extend make the extend the uh, the drive. And then eventually, uh, Olave got that touchdown to pretty much just put that game away if it wasn't already. I, I want to bump it up to an A minus uh, based off of Crowley's performance. He averaged 8.3 yards himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As a game, as, as a whole, yes. When, when he took over a lot in that second half, yeah. Well, he was also he also well, came in a few times in the first half. Um, yeah, he, he had that he had, he had that catch. Uh, I forget which drive it was. We had that catch that went over 20 yards there and looked good. He looked good. I He appears <laughs> to be the second running back right now. Of course, that's with Mayan Williams not participating in this game. He appears to be mm-hmm. the second running back in third down. He's He's the second third down running back, if that makes sense. It seems like yeah. Teague was coming in for like traditional sets but if they went into like a spread pass set then Crowley was the second guy in yeah uh yeah um still ask any word on Henderson just a little dinged up uh I think I, I think Day said it at, I think Day said at halftime that he was just a little just a little dinged up but would only come in if they absolutely needed him to come in uh, he didn't even say that but I think it was implied if, if this game had not gotten out of hand so quickly I'm sure he would have come back in all right, wide receivers here. What what more can you ask? They they not many drops in this game. Uh, you got to give you got to give them an A. You got to give the wide receivers an A here. They they played outstanding. Olave got a pair of touchdowns. Uh, Wilson got a touchdown. Uh, I thought Jason should have had a touchdown <laughs> somewhere in there for how well how well he played too. So I give I give the wide receiver core an A. Yeah, absolutely. Um, average, average, a lot of a 23 yards a catch. Garrett Wilson, 23 yards a catch. JSN, 33 yards a catch. Yeah. I, if we should, we should consider, we should consider that an A plus maybe. You know, I'm just, I'm going to move on to the next one. Tight ends. How about if I give those an Yodi. A plus, 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 plus. Yodi, man. <laughs> Straight up. We had a Rossi I, touchdown. We had a Ruckert touchdown. Ruckert was getting it 10 yards a, a catch. And by the way, just to make everyone happy, we'll say tight end. Yeah, I, I, was, in, I was ahead of you, Nomad. We'll say tight end slash fullback, even though Rossi yeah. is a tight end <laughs> on the roster, on the official Ohio State roster, he is listed as a tight end. Yeah, even though he was lined up at fullback. Let, let, let's, let's just give credit to both fullback slash tight end <laughs> uh rossi is on scholarship he's a former he walk on, on scho- but yes. he is currently on scholarship yes correct and let's let's finish the offensive lineman um grade here uh did did he even get sacked i don't even remember looking um i don't even know if um got sacked i can't remember no he only has he yeah, only had two rushes. One of them was a designed run. The other one was a scramble. Um, okay. So no, he he didn't. Yeah. Um, so I yes, just give this all this did. Stroud didn't. Yeah. Thank thank you, yeah, so Gangland. I, um, but I again, we're not we're not grading lineman. the backup offensive line here. Um, yeah, I mean, we talked about all the success the running backs had. Um, C.J. Stroud was clean the entire game. For the most part, um, he, he did have to dodge some rushers every once in a while. Uh, there were a few holding calls if we're really nitpicking. Um, so I don't want to go A plus. But it's an A. I think an A is good. Yeah, for, for how well they did. Yeah, I'd, I'd give them an A there. 
Penalties, I still think penalties are still an issue. If I look in here, penalties, six penalties, 65 yards, a little bit lower than the average that they've done so far this year. So maybe a little bit better, but still, I think six, 65 yards is still a little too high for me. Petit Paris earned himself a 15 yarder by being too good. <laughs> that was dumb. That was you know dumb. what, though? I will take those penalties in all honesty. I will take them. Because he just got that by being aggressive and doing his job. Yeah. It's not his fault. Yeah. That guy was really light and flew a long way. By the way, NPF uh, not allowed a sack ever in his Ohio State career. Just, just that's a stat worth bringing up. So good. Uh, before we um, move on to the defense here, uh, just just some interesting numbers here regarding how good the, the offense did for string here. 21st downs. Uh, actually here, Jared, actually the first string, Jared, only yeah. three penalties, three penalties for 40 yards is all the, uh, the first team had. They had two penalties in the first half and then one in that first drive there. Okay. That's it. That's it there. Uh, 21st downs, eight for nine on third downs, eight for nine. And then um, they had, they were averaging 10 yards per play and averaging 19, almost 19 and a half yards per completion and rushing for 6.3 yards per rush. And the, and the most important stat here, Jared, four for four in the red zone. Well, that's if you count field goals. It is. Four yeah. for four scoring, three for four touchdowns. Yep. All right, Kyle, let's, let's right. do an ad read. Am I going first or are you going first? Uh, I'll let you I'll let you talk about the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle, it was late breaking news uh, during our Friday episode. Uh, so I'm going to bring it back around now. Uh, the Iron Bean Coffee Company has increased their line of flavored coffees. Uh, we we've talked about like the unicorn for uh, a bunch of episodes. We've talked about the grog the intense blueberry, the mom's carrot cake, the mint chocolate chip. Um, we've talked about all those several times during the course of our advertisings on the show, um, but the, the line has been extended. Now available, salt, salted caramel mocha, vanilla hazelnut, cinnamon roll, butter pecan, peanut butter chocolate, and bananas foster. Guys, if there isn't one coffee and, and like sometimes I'm uh, sometimes I'm a flavored coffee guy and sometimes I'm not a flavored coffee guy, but I'm not going to turn down a cinnamon roll some, or caramel. Like, I feel like those are always going to be two safe ones for me. Um, I'm sure the peanut butter chocolate one's good. I love peanut butter chocolate. I sometimes don't like the flavor of like artificial peanut butter flavoring. But I, I have just I just out of absolute trust for Dylan and the crew over at Iron Bean Coffee Company that that this isn't going to be that. I'm sure this isn't going to taste like that cheap peanut butter flavoring like some coffees do. I, I, I trust them implicitly over there. I haven't had a chance to buy one yet, so I don't know. But I trust them implicitly. I'm sure it's great. So I'm going to I'm going to end up getting one for myself. I think you should, too, over at IronBeanCoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Uh, I'll go ahead and mention where the Mad Canadian will be uh, at it this week again. A little light this week, so that means you better uh, get out of your way to, to go get some of that delicious barbecue that the Mad Canadian is serving up. This Monday, he'll be at the North and Patterson, corner of North and Patterson in Cary from 10 to 2. And this Thursday, also in Cary, at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria. From four to seven. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what else we need to say here. Just listen to some of our previous um, episodes of a lot of the great, great reviews that that real people have gone, got some of his food. Uh, it, great food, great person. Just just go get some food. There you <laughs> just go. go get it. <laughs> uh, be sure to check out his social media for more information about him and his food truck. Mad Canadian, Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. All right, Kyle, let's let's grade that defense. 
Um, yes, sir. So once again, and I feel like maybe we should adjust our notes for the future. We have defensive line. And I think maybe we should start breaking this down into defensive tackles and defensive ends. Um, the defensive ends looked better this game. Um, I, I don't know if they're where I want them to be yet. And, and maybe our expectations, because we are so spoiled by just all of the insane defensive ends, all of the insane pass rushers Ohio State's had through the years, through the Boses and the Chase Youngs and the Sam Hubbards and just m more guys who are amazing. Um, then maybe we're a little bit spoiled, but Ohio State just isn't getting that from their defensive ends right now. Um, I think uh, Tui Molau looks great when he's in there. Sawyer's showing ton of promise. They're they're just they're not completely done baking yet. That's and they shouldn't be. That's fine. I I want to see more out of Zachary Harrison. I'm, I'm really waiting for a breakout game from him. I know he's dealing with back problems, so I'm not. I, I, I'm hearing the word bust thrown around with him and, I, and I'm not there yet. Those back injuries I'm, are nothing to mess with. So I'm, I'm not going anywhere near that word with him by any means, but he's not. Unfortunately, like if you're not as good as Chase Young or Abosa, then you're kind of looked at as a bust at Ohio State. And that's both fair and unfortunate. Um, we should have high standards, but it's it's not great. So defensive ends, I think I'm going to give like a B. Um, kind of, that's kind of where I was going at. When the first half here, again, hard to really judge because they were pretty much out that whole second half there. But in the first half, they only let up 37 rushing yards and just over 100 passing yards in, in two quarters. So yeah, I, I thought they deserve a B just being able to contain, stopping the run. But as you said, Jared, just not enough pressure, not enough pressure. Like they only had for the entire game, one quarterback hurry and one sack, not get it to the quarterback as much as they should. So well, yeah, and who is they in that sentence? The defensive ends? Because I thought the defensive tackles played really well. Um, I think yeah. they deserve a higher grade than a B, um, maybe an A. Uh, may, not not an A plus, maybe maybe an A minus, um, you know. And it's not it's not like you know we, we let's not start pretending like Rutgers is is Akron. They're not. They're much 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 better than Akron. Um, that that needs to be said. Um, they're not a. They're you know in the lower half of the Big Ten East for sure. That goes without saying. But this. They're five times better than Akron. They would beat Tulsa. So I just I just want to try and scale this correctly. Um, I, T Stuart, I know you're trolling, but no, they they not even close. No. Um, so the defensive tackles, I think, maybe deserve like an A minus. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can I can I can agree with that. Linebackers. Linebackers, I have I all year I still have a hard time really grading them, trying to figure out how well they're de developing. It's I don't want to say that the linebackers, if we don't hear from them, that's a good thing. That's more of a that's more of a cornerback position if you don't see too many stats from them. It usually means it's good. But I don't know. Maybe maybe I give the linebackers well a B here. I have a question I, for you. What position is Ronnie Hickman playing right now, and how do we grade? How does he fit into these grades? Is he uh, Hickman? I believe Hickman is classified as he's a, a safety slash bullet. Yeah, he's a he's a bullet. So is he a linebacker? Is he a safety? Um, if, if we're including Hickman in the linebacker grade, that amplifies the grade of the Buckeye linebackers. Um, that probably takes them. And again, like we're, we're grading based off of expectation here, right? So our expectation for the defensive ends are higher than our expectations for the linebackers. Um, I thought, and so if we're, if we're really talking about expectation and if we're talking about improvement from week one, linebackers are playing really, really good right now. Um, they're 
exceeding the low expectations that we currently have have for the linebackers. And they're raising those okay. expectations, which is what you should be doing. Uh, again, especially yeah. if we're counting Hickman as a linebacker for the sake of these grades. Uh, Cody Simon's getting better with every play. Taraja Mitchell is great against the run. He's limited in pass pro. Um, Eichenberg had a really nice play. Um, I, I think. Too. I'm sorry. He had an interception as well. That was the nice play I was referencing. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I, I think the linebackers played well. I think I think they probably deserve like a B plus and a minus. All right. I can give them a B plus. I, I'm good with that. And Corners. again, I think that's with the understanding that our expectations for them are still kind of low. And mm -hmm. also not necessarily sure what to do with Hickman for the sake of these grades. Yeah. Corners. Corners, corners. I no complaints. Man, no complaints. I man. Other than the one long play that went for. That's the problem. That one, Stuart, that one pass that went for 75 yards. Other than that one. I thought they did really well. The, the only other class. Class or the, yeah, the class, <laughs> the other passes that went longer. Was only 13 yards. So yep. they kept, they were, they really prevented a lot of long completions other than the one that went in the um, in the first half there. Yeah, I, I thought they did really well, especially in that first half. They really um, held down um, uh, Noah, really made him uncomfortable, made him really uncomfortable being able to throw the ball into tight coverage there. So I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd give the corners probably an A minus, or maybe, maybe even an A. I'd say they, a solid they A. Got two, yeah, they got two interceptions, one return for a pick six there, two, Two weeks in a go, two weeks in a row for two pick sixes. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah, I'll give him a solid A then. And then you want to talk about young talent. We also had uh, Ryan Watts uh, get an interception in this game. Um, Ryan yeah. Watts is just another guy uh, in these. You know, again, if we're combining the the freshman and the redshirt freshman, these two classes that Ohio State is just delivering an incredible amount of talent from, uh, especially mm -hmm. in the defensive backfield. And by the way, I looked it up while you were talking at one point, Kyle uh, Hickman is a third year player. Just yes. so, so we're clear. Um, but yeah, it's I, 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 I think the cornerbacks are playing amazing. I think the cornerbacks been playing amazingly for several weeks right now. It of course helps that um, someone helped me out with their best wide receiver. Um, he, he got hurt fairly early. Um, yes, Bo Melton. Thank you. Nomad. Mm -hmm. Um, he got hurt early. That obviously takes a load of pressure off of the Ohio state defensive backs, but yeah, solid day, solid day. Safeties. I probably give them a solid a two. Did it really let anything beat them over the top other than one, the one that they just took a bad angle there. Uh, but yeah, I thought I thought a solid A also for the safeties. Yeah, uh, again, based off of expectations, because I don't think the safeties did anything spectacular, but also sometimes that's what a safety is supposed to do. And yep. again, like where does is Hickman a safety? Because that bumps up the ratings of the safeties of depending on where we're counting Hickman. Um, yep. But yeah, I, I think the safeties had a quiet day, which I think is partially what you want from a safety position is to have a quiet day. So yep. um, again, based off of the low expectations that we have for a proctorless safety room, I think they exceeded those expectations and they get an A. Yep. Special teams, A. No, no real issues with special teams. Uh, I, I did like, even though nothing came for it, I did like seeing two returners back at, at back returning punts. Yeah. And I have uh, to say one of the best thing, the, the punters, the punter had a great game. And by that, I mean, he didn't get to play until like late into the third quarter, which is exactly what you want out of your punter is to just, you want to talk about having a quiet game is a good thing. So congrats to Jesse Murko for hardly playing on Saturday. Yep. And then coaching. 
I'm only giving I'm giving coaching an A minus. Okay. Just because I if I if I'm grading the game as a whole, I'm gonna I know I know a lot of the offense and defense we were kind of grading on the first half, but the coaching I want to grade if, if it were just doing just the first half, I think coaching a solid A, but um a little disappointing to see when the second string came in and other other players got to play into just the I just wasn't a big fan of the play calling. I mean, Ohio State only had like, was it 60, under 60 yards for one and a half quarters. I thought we weren't even talking about the second half in terms of the grading. All right. Well, then I would give an A for the first half. Honestly, I want to give the coaching staff an A plus. Um, we're, what we're seeing the defense do right now, I think. Matt Barnes deserves a ton of credit for. Um, yep. We're seeing, I think, a lot more of the correct players playing. We're seeing Cody Simon taking much more snaps. We're seeing Ronnie Hickman taking much more snaps. We're seeing a lot more uh, JTT in the game. Um, the correct players, I think, are starting to get the correct number of snaps. Matt Barnes deserves credit for that. The defense is more multiple now than it was under Kerry Combs. And I think Matt Barnes deserves a ton of credit for that. I, I think the fact that Matt Barnes was given an incredibly difficult task in the middle of the year, based off of how difficult that is, how relatively inexperienced he is as a defensive coordinator. Previous, I mean, he's still, he's not the technically the defensive coordinator for Ohio State right now. Didn't he have like one year as a co-defensive coordinator prior to Ohio State? Something like that at Maryland? Maybe it was one year as a defensive coordinator, one year as a co-defensive. I, I forget exactly, but yeah, I think so. This is not an experienced defensive coordinator. Oh, was it BC? I thought it was Maryland. It, regardless. Um he took over play calling at Maryland. Yeah. Um I think Matt Barnes is doing a tremendous job with an incredibly difficult situation. I also think that Ryan Day deserves a ton of credit for risking a quarterback controversy by sitting Stroud during Akron, bringing him back up with just giving him the, the, the reins, the keys to the offense. Once again, no questions, no controversy, just giving Stroud the offense back. And he did. A, and Stroud delivered that confidence right back to Ryan Day. And mm -hmm. I think that Ryan Day deserves a ton of credit for how he's handling the quarterback situation right now. And yep. I think no, he also absolutely. deserves a ton of credit for easing Stroud into the game. His his first couple passes were some easy ones to Ruckert. Um, then as Stroud started sort of catching his rhythm, started throwing the ball down the field in the middle. So if you don't know, Throwing deep in the middle is easier than throwing deep outside just because of angles. And that's how triangles work, right? Like it, it takes longer to get to the outside of the field. So then he threw like a deeper pass down the middle. Then he threw a deeper pass down the sideline. Like it's, it's getting, he sort of eased Stroud into the game, let him get his confidence. I thought he's getting there. He's getting there. Yeah, and I thought Ryan Day threw a touchdown to the fullback, which is a thing we've never seen at Ohio State in like, I guess that's right. I called him a fullback. Point is, is that I thought Ryan Day had one of his best days as a play caller this season, this game. I, I think the coaching staff deserves a ton of credit, and this is a unit, again, if we're talking about sort of low expectations, this is a unit Kyle and I were trashing yep. a couple weeks ago. All right, Jared. So that's our that's our uh, our scarlet and grade for the Rutgers game here. So let's go ahead and answer some sleuthcast questions uh, real quick. Uh, there were a couple during the live chat over here. Stuart asks, what's the most valuable special teams member, the kicker, the punter, the long snapper or the returner? I guess it depends upon what you mean by valuable, but I'm going to say kicker. Like we, we all use the hashtag hashtag college kicker for a reason. We rarely say college long snapper, college punter, college 
returner. I mean, all 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 of them have the potential to enact disaster upon the team. Um, <laughs> look at look at Rucker. Look at Rutgers with the long snapper. Um, Kyle, do you agree? Disagree? Yeah, it's maybe maybe not so much returner. I mean, return having a having a valuable returner can get you a touchdown. But if they're that good, you can just not kick to them. But I think I think in in a very close game, in a very in a game that can be hard to get yards, hard to get momentum. Think it back in the trust trestle days. Hunter, the punter is very critical in turning yeah. that field over. Then if you get a bad kick where you get you shank a punt and only goes for 13, 20 yards. Yeah. I mean, that's that, that could be a difference maker right there. And any one of I mean, the returner can botch a, a look at fricking Wisconsin on Saturday. The a returner can cost you a football game. For, uh, yeah. Long snapper can cost you a football game. The punter can cost you a football game. The kicker yep. can cost you a football game. All, you, you don't want any weaknesses on the team. But, you know, Stewart says, got to be a long snapper. Everything is missed with a botched snap. But I'll say this, kickers and punters are on scholarship and long snappers aren't most of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of All kids right. who can, it's sometimes valuable comes down to how rare is your talent. And there's a lot of kids that can long snap. All right, Dinger asks us, Jared, with the team's improvement play over the last two games, do you think the post Tulsa Liam was, player yes. drama has been a catalyst to bring the young team together? Uh no, I think those are great narratives that we like to that we like to spin as fans. And I quite frankly just see a young team getting better. That's that's what I see. I see a young team yep. becoming yes let less less young with every with every game i totally got lost on my okay totally got lost they're getting more experience getting more experience and that's what that's what they need here um nomad in the live chat is barnes the the defensive coordinator next year here's i think this is this is his trial here this is his audition so what's wild what is absolutely wild is that Matt Barnes is doing well enough that that's not an absurd converse. A couple of weeks ago, we are asking, can you even hand the offense or excuse me, the defense to Matt Barnes? Can you even can is he even a better alternative than Kerry Combs as a defensive play caller right now? Is, is he even that we went from that to maybe Matt Barnes just keeps the defensive coordinator job. The fact that he's even put himself in the conversation is a huge compliment to Matt Barnes. And even if they bring in another DC, I still think Matt Barnes has earned himself a co DC title. Yeah, agreed. And just, Completely just, agreed. I'm going to throw this out there because I haven't decided how I feel about it yet. This is everyone's opportunity to call me an idiot down in the YouTube comments or send us an email or tell me I'm an idiot in Discord or Twitter or wherever you feel like calling me an idiot. Um, how do we feel about Mike Tressel as a defensive coordinator? Uh, he's has. He he coached under D'Antonio for years. Um, he, he coached for D'Antonio for years at Michigan State, called the defenses at the Michigan State for several years. Uh, he has Cincinnati's defense looking really good right now. Um, just tossing out Mike Tressel as a possibility. He's maybe not the sexiest hire. You, you, we could possibly get there. Maybe some big name defensive coordinators that maybe you want to go get, but I'm just throwing that out there. All right. All right. Next question we have here. Meter 17. With Oregon's loss, does that give Ohio State a messier road to the playoffs? Does Oregon need to lose another game? Is that really that concerning since they lost to Stanford? Um, is it inevitable that they will lose again? Uh, first off, losing always makes the road to the playoffs messier. Ohio State would be in the top four life. right now. You get if, one life. Yeah. Yeah. Or two lives. Yeah. You, yeah. You, well, you get one extra life, right? You don't lose twice. We're, we're all it's it's the it's October. It's the first week, October. We're already talking about don't lose twice. That's the mantra here. Don't lose twice. So 
ultimately you have a, the safety net's gone. You had a safety net. It's gone now. So yeah, it makes it, it makes it dirtier. Um, as far as, uh, does Oregon need to lose another game? Maybe, um, it would help Ohio state. It would help Ohio state period. If just like the, like the ACC feels completely out of the playoff picture right now, it's going to help Ohio state and Cincinnati and everyone else. If the PAC 12 also removes itself from the playoff picture, yeah, that, I, that's just, I that pers- makes the conversation that much cleaner. I, I personally don't think, I honestly don't think whatever happens to Oregon moving on, whether they went out, I don't think it's going to matter. It would help for, for Ohio state fans, but it would help. I, I, Oh, we'll, we'll we'll get into that on Tuesday's episode here. Fair enough. Uh, Fair enough. Austin Formation, how many yards does Trey need to win the Heisman over a QB? Well, he needs to play a full game and have 30 <laughs> touches. Yeah, um, he's I, let, let's not even have that conversation. One, the Heisman is stupid and it doesn't matter. It's it's a farce of a trophy. We put too much weight on it. Two, he's a freshman like. We need to understand. We need to look at the mistakes we made with Maurice Claret. And I don't I'm not even talking about all the off field stuff with Claret. I'm simply talking about giving the freshman running back too many carries, having his shoulders break down during the course of the season and all the injury issues that happened with Claret. Keep his load light. This is why. Oh, your 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 leg kind of hurts. You're done for the game. Get out. We're already up by three scores. I don't care if you got a cramp, go sit down. Now you're a freshman. We need to not overload his body. And that's again, that's another Ryan day making a great in-game call. Just being like, okay, you're done now. Bye. Go sit down. Yeah. So the answer to the question, it's not going to matter. He's not going to win it. I don't think so. It would, it would. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Last question we have here. Buckeye Zach, what does this game's performance for CJ tell us? about how blessed we are to have him. I think I mentioned it earlier. This is what Ryan Day saw in him and why he chose him over the the other quarterbacks. Uh, And I think this is what every Buckeye fan expected to see in game one, whether it was realistic expectations or not. But this, this is, this is what we, this is what CJ Stroud can do. Now, Now it's going to come down to, being consistent here, uh, I, I think he can look really good against a not as good Maryland team next week. But we we shall save that for um, Thursday's episode. All right, and that is, that that's all the questions we have here. Then Jared. All right. Um, already really far over. Not going to waste any time. Uh, come hang out with us in the Discord. Uh, we had another great social screening. Um, on on Saturday, we we watched we watched actually a bunch of games because we were watching Indiana Penn State, but we were also watching Boston College and Clemson. Uh, God, talk about losing a game with a it wasn't a long snapper. It was the regular center missing. a. But dang, how do you lose? A, we'll talk about on that on the Tuesday episode. Point is, is that we all hung out in a discord room and, and watched some college football together. And it was rad. Um, also, we have our Wednesday episodes that are available only to our Patreons, um, our patrons over at Patreon. Uh, so just I would say check out the Discord and hang out in there for a while. And if you like that and if you enjoy that, maybe consider throwing us three bucks a month over at uh, patreon.thesleepcast.com. But come hang out in the Discord first. Give You know, taste it before you buy it. Uh, discord.thesleepcast.com. Yeah, last week's episode we got to talk about alternate jerseys, and yeah. I thought it was, I thought it was really good. It was a really I, good conversation. I'm not even trying to be a salesman right now. I, as far as just my personal enjoyment, I'm loving the Wednesday, the Secret Wednesday episodes, just because how casual they are. Like, if you think yeah. these are casual, good lord, you should see the you should see the what we call the Sloop Cat only episodes. All right, Kyle, that's it for my plugging. Do you have anything for Kyle's Corner? Uh, last Wednesday, Jared, I know we didn't talk about it on the previous episodes, but last Wednesday, Columbus played in the Campeones Cup against Cruz Azul over at uh, Liga MX. He's talking about the crew part- right now for everyone who's insanely yes. confused. Yes, the Columbus crew. 
Um, every year, the MOS previous champion and the Liga MX previous champion play each other in, in an expedition. Expe- I cannot talk. They, <laughs> I cannot talk. Uh, they play each other. They win a little tro- a little trophy called that they, they deemed Campeones Cup, and the crew win. Crew won two nothing, even though they were outplayed, outpossessioned, outshot. Two nothing, uh, as as the Columbus Columbus fans like to say, Dos Acero with the U.S. U.S. versus um, Mexico teams. And is that it for Kyle's corner? That's it. That's it for today. All right, um, everyone. Tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a Kyle. In honor of Cincinnati, you want to do a Cincinnati band tonight? Cincinnati beating Notre Dame. Luke Fickle's our boy. I know some Cincinnati fans can be a little bit uh, rambunctious towards Ohio State, but I, I don't care. I love Luke Fickle. Kyle, I think we're going to play both tonight and on the Tuesday episode. We're going to play some Cincinnati bands. We're going to start with a, uh, a band called Motherfolk. Uh, they're out of Cincinnati. Uh, you can give them a listen right now. Uh, for the audio listeners, all you have to do is not turn us off. And for the YouTube listeners, there'll be a link down there because we can't play music on YouTube because YouTube and laws and trademarks and stuff. So uh, with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Motherfolk. <laughs>